Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge International AS and A level biology paper one multiple choice question answer. May June 2021 paper 11. Question number one. The diagram shows a mitochondrion drawn from an electron micrograph. Point X to Y is three centimeter. The actual length of the mitochondrion using the X to Y is 3000 nanometer. What is the magnification of the drawing? So we can do M is equals to I divided by A. So here, in this case, we have three centimeter as an image. So three into 10 for millimeter, and then multiply it with a million for the nanometer and divided by 3000. Okay, so if we cut the numbers, the answer will be 10,000. So for question number one, answer is C. A specimen of plant tissue is observed twice with a microscope. Firstly, using red light with a wavelength of 650 nanometer, then using a green light with a wavelength of 510 nanometer. What happens to the magnification and resolution when using green light to red light? Magnification, well, it doesn't change because we're just changing the light. So it remains the same. However, since the wavelength of green light has a you know, smaller wavelength, that's why the resolution will increase. Resolution is the ability to distinguish between two points. And the smaller the wavelength, the higher the resolution is going to be. So for question number two, uh, option D. The electron micrograph shows a structure found in the cytoplasm of an animal cell. All right, what is the cell structure? Well, technically this cell structure looks like a centriole, arranged in that particular fashion. So it should be centriole, option three, A. Centriole. Well, we can technically also cancel out lysosome. It doesn't look like ribosome. Neither it is a vesicle. Which cell structure contain nucleic acid? We know Golgi body does not contain nucleic acid. It just modifies and packages protein. So uh, lysosome also does not contain nucleic acid, but mitochondria and ribosome both contains nucleic acid. So option D will be the correct answer. Question number four, option D. Which statements about mitochondria, chloroplast, or prokaryotes are correct? Mitochondria and chloroplast have fully permeable inner membrane. Well, they don't have a fully permeable inner membrane, so it's wrong. Prokaryotes and chloroplast have 70S ribosome that are the sites of translation and polypeptide synthesis. Yes, prokaryotes and chloroplast are early bacteria. They live inside eukaryotic organism due to symbiosis. So yes, they have 70 years ribosome, which is a correct statement. If option one is wrong, then actually A, B, C all cancels out and thereby for uh, question number five, the answer is D. We don't need to see point number three and four. The very large, 1,000 nanometer Pandora virus found in Chile, Australia are considered to be viruses because they cannot replicate their own genome, cannot make their proteins. They also share essential structural features with other viruses. What are the essential structural features of viruses? Well, viruses must be non-cellular. They must have a protein coat and they should have either a DNA or a RNA. So point one two four must be correct. <coughs> <coughs> Viruses don't contain both DNA and RNA as genetic material. So question number six, option B. Question number seven, a sample of food was heated with Benedict solution, which changed color to green. A second sample of same food was boiled with dilute hydrochloric acid, neutralized using sodium hydrogen carbonate. It was then heated with Benedict solution. The color changed to red. Okay. So guys, the first uh, color change actually indicates uh, presence of reducing sugar. 
the second color change represents presence of non-reducing sugar because we can see that there is an increase in concentration of reducing sugar after the hydrolysis. All right, what did this result show? So this result show that there is reducing sugar present. It cannot confirm that there is glucose present. It, this result shows that there is non-reducing sugar present. So option C should be correct. 7C, which pair of molecules only includes macromolecules that can be found in animal cells? You see, animal cells, we cannot find amylopectin or amylase. We can find collagen and glycogen. Deoxyribose, we do not find starch. Neither we find sucrose in animal cells. So 8B. Homo galacturonan is a polysaccharide found in plant cell walls. The diagram shows a molecule of the monomer used to form homo galacturonan. A student studied the structure of this monomer and compared with the structure of a monomer used for cellulose. All right. So this is the first carbon. This is the second carbon. This is the third carbon, fourth, fifth, and sixth carbon. The first carbon, we can see the OH, at, OH is at the bottom. And the fourth carbon, the OH is at the top. This is actually different from that of cellulose. If we were to draw a cellulose molecule monomer, the cellulose molecule monomer would be OH in the first carbon at the top. In the second carbon, the OH would be at the bottom. The third carbon, the OH would be at the top. And in the fourth carbon, the OH would be at the bottom. And then there would be CH2OH over here. Now the question says, which carbon atoms in the monomer in the diagram have hydroxyl group arranged in different positions to those found in cellulose monomer? So we can see in cellulose monomer, we have OH at the top, in the fourth carbon, we have OH at the bottom. So carbon one and carbon four should be the correct answer. So option A is correct. Question number 10, which statement is correct for triglyceride and phospholipids? Triglycerides and both phospholipid, this statement should be correct for both of them. A phosphate group is joined. Well, a phosphate group, group is joined only with phospholipid, not triglyceride. Hydrocarbons chains may be saturated or unsaturated. Yes, this is a correct statement. This can be the same for phospholipid and triglyceride. They are polar molecule. Well, uh, phospholipid is polar, but triglyceride is not polar. So, all right, they contain three ester bonds. All right, so uh, next point, they contain three ester bonds. We know that uh, in the case of triglyceride, there is three ester bonds, but in the case of phospholipid, there is only two ester bonds. So this is also a wrong statement. So 10B should be correct. Which description of collagen is correct? All right. A collagen is a molecule that consists of three polypeptide chains in the shape of a helix. The three chains wound together into a triple helix called the fiber. Well, it's not called the fiber. The fiber requires many collagen molecules. A collagen molecule consists of three polypeptide chains, each of which is an alpha helix. Well, a collagen molecule is not an alpha helix. A collagen molecule consists of three polypeptide chains wound tightly into a triple helix called a fiber. It's not called a fiber. All right, so finally, a collagen molecule consists of three polypeptide chains in which the third amino acid is glycine, Perfect. The three polypeptides are worn tightly into triple helix. Correct. Many of these helices form fiber. Correct. Many of the helices together can form a fiber. So 11 D. Question number 12. In a healthy human, the mean value for the number of hemoglobin molecules is in one red blood cell is 260 million. How many alpha globin chains does one red blood cell contain in a healthy human? Okay, since a healthy human consists 260 million red blood, uh, 260 million molecules of hemoglobin, 
So there will be two alpha globin each in each hemoglobin. So it will be multiplied by two. So 260 million multiplied by two uh, should be something like 5.2 into 10 to the power of eight. So option C is the correct answer. Which statement about a peptide bond are correct? All right, about a peptide bond, the correct statements, all right. It joins two monomers which are always identical to each other. We know that in amino acids, the monomers are never identical to each other. So if option number one is wrong, then A and B will be canceled. It contains four different atoms. All right, let's look into a peptide linkage. All right, CO, NH. All right, so there are four, there are four different atoms in the bonding. So option number two is correct. All right, so now it can be broken by addition of water at room temperature. We know that peptide bonds are pretty much stable. They don't break down at room temperature and neither just by simple addition of water. So this is a wrong statement. So if option three is wrong, then C is incorrect and thereby D is the correct answer. We don't even have to read the last point, but let's just read it for the sake of it. It is important in the primary structure of protein. Yes, CONH, this particular bond is very important in the primary structure. Which graph correctly shows the activation energy of a reaction when an enzyme is added? Well, activation energy decreases when an enzyme is added. However, activation energy, all right, in this case, from reactant to product should have been this one. So this is wrong. From products to reactants, all right, so it's from reactants to products, in this case, the activation energy should have been this one. Also wrong. For C, from reactants to products, the activation energy should have been this one. So also wrong. From reactants to product activation energy, yes, for enzyme catalyzed reaction, this is correct. Option number D is correct. So 14, D. 15, the enzyme lactase is found in the membranes of epithelial cells lining the small intestine. The enzyme is formed by a single polypeptide that folds to give three regions an active side with a free amino acid outside the cell or short section inside the membrane or short section inside the cell. What type of amino acid would be found in each of the three regions? Outside the cell, definitely it should be hydrophilic because it should be interacting with the outside environment. Inside the membrane, it should be hydrophobic because it should be interacting with the phospholipid bilayer. Inside the cell, it should again be hydrophilic. So option A, seems to be the correct answer. 15, A is the correct answer. A student wrote three statements about cell signaling. A signal chemical always has the same shape as protein receptor on a target cell. So a signal molecule, a signal chemical always has the same shape as protein receptor. This is a wrong statement. It doesn't have a same shape. It has a complementary shape. So option number one is wrong that takes out A, B, C, all of them, and option number D should be the correct answer. 16, D is the correct answer. All right. 17, at which stages of mitoses are chromosome composed of two chromatids that are held together by a centromere? All right. We know that in anaphase, the chromosomes are actually separated. So they are not held together by centromere. Anaphase is already wrong. In metaphase, they're held together. In prophase, they're held together. So C should be the correct answer. 17 C. Question number 18. The jellyfish, Turitopsis dorni, is described as being immortal. If T. dorni is not eaten by predators, or diseased, it seems to be able to live forever. There is no way to determine the biological age of T-Dorney individuals. Which feature of the cells in T-Dorney could explain this observation? Organisms, those that, those that does not tend to age, they have the ability to actually regenerate their, um, they have their ability to regenerate their telomeres in their cell because the telomeres is the main reason why we age. All right, the telomeres, they shorten every time, every time our somatic cells divide. 
And so uh, therefore the answer should be an ability to restore telomeres to the original length is the correct answer, 18C. Some chemicals used to stop tumor growth work by preventing the DNA double helix from uncoiling and separating. During which stage of cell cycle would they act? All right, so these chemicals, they are used to stop tumor growth. They work by preventing the DNA double helix from uncoiling and separating. So this will you know, interfere with interface because in that particular stage, it wants to uncoil. So option B should be the correct answer, 19B. Four nucleotides, A, B, C, D, each consist of three phosphate group, A nitrogen as base and a pentose sugar. Characteristics of the base and sugar components before they are joined to, from each nucleotide are shown in the table. Which nucleotide could pair with the adenine base during replication, DNA replication. Now you see DNA replication adenine will definitely bind with thymine. There will be two hydrogen bonds for sure. All right, so the ring of the nitrogen structure should be single because thymine in this case has a single structure, okay? Because it's a DNA, DNA is deoxyribose. We have to understand deoxyribose has, has one less oxygen compared to that of the carbon. So there is five carbon ratio with four oxygen. So the answer for this will be deoxyribose five is to four. The answer will be D. Question number 20, D. Question number 21, the statements describe the process of translation. A peptide bond forms between adjacent amino acid. Hydrogen bonds form between the anticodon and the codon. mRNA binds to the ribosome. tRNA enters the ribosome carrying the specific amino acid. So guys, we can clearly say that the mRNA first, you know, it needs to enter the ribosome. So the mRNA binds to the ribosome. So three is the first step. All right. After three, all right, uh, a pep, all right, uh, okay. So after three, a tRNA enters the ribosome carrying the specific amino acid, definitely. That is the next step. Because after that, the tRNA is going to form hydrogen bond between codon and anticodon of the mRNA. All right. And finally, a peptide bond forms between the adjacent amino acids, so forth. So three, four, three, four, Two, one. Option B is the correct answer. The sequence of question number 22. The sequence of amino acid in a section of polypeptide is histidine, proline, aspartic acid, leucine. All right. What is a correct sequence of mRNA codon for this polypeptide section? Okay. All right. So what is the correct sequence of mRNA codon for this polypeptide section? This is possible DNA triplets that is actually given. All right, we can start with histidine. You see, histidine is GTA. GTA. All right, so uh, it can be GTA or it can be GTG. However, uh, if it is GTA, we want the mRNA, so the mRNA will be C, A, U. Okay, we can match that. All right. Okay. Uh, if it was GTG, if it was GTG, if it was GTG, then it would be C, A, C. We also have a match with C, A, C. Okay, so... Uh, we'll let both of this carry on. All right, for proline, we have GGA. So proline, we have GGA, all right, and also GGG. So if GGG or GGA, then we would have CCU or CCC. So we both have CCC or CCU. We can definitely cancel these two out. These two are no longer 
in the competition. So let's carry on with the third one, aspartic acid. Aspartic acid has CTA, CTA, and on the other side, it has CTG, all right? So the CTA, you know, the MRA codon for this one will be G, A, U. And for the CTG, it will be G, A, C. So we got G, A, C, all right? And finally, for the last one, the leucine, all right? Leucine, we have G, A, T. GAT and then we have GAC. Okay, so GAT, Lucine, will produce C U A. All right. So we got C U A for the last one. So B is the correct answer. Question number 22, option B is the correct answer. What contributes to the upward movement of water in a xylem vessel of a plant? Now, cohesion of water molecules by the hydrogen bonding is one of the factors that helps it. Adhesion of water molecules to the cellulose walls of the xylem vessels of hydrogen by hydrogen bonding also helps it, unbroken column. All right. Removal of water from xylem vessel in a leaf reduces the hydrostatic pressure in the xylem. This also helps to, you know, uptake the water. So one, two, three, all should be correct. 23, option A. Question number 24. The diameter of a tree trunk usually decreases slightly during the day. Which changes in environmental factors during the day could cause the diameter to decrease even more? Increased light intensity will increase water evaporation. Increased wind speed will increase water evaporation, or transportation, increased temperature. So all of these factors will lead to higher rate of transportation. Option number D should be the correct answer. 24D. The diagram shows a transverse section of a stem. Which area is the phloem? Well, we can see D to be the xylem, C to be the cambium. So B should be the phloem. B is phloem. 25, B is the correct answer. The diagram shows a xerophytic leaf in different conditions P and Q. Which statement describe the difference between the cell walls in layer Y in conditions P and Q? All right, guys, first of all, we need to understand what is going on with this particular two cells. Uh, sorry, with this particular two uh, leaf sections. All right. In P, we can see a particular, uh, uh, you know, um, section of the leaf which is uh, presented in, which is put into a low water potential. So water actually uh, moved out of this particular leaf tissue. Water actually moved out of this particular leaf tissue. In Q, we are looking at a target section of the xerophytic leaf. So it should be high water potential. High water potential. Water will actually move into the uh, tissues Q, the tissues of Q. Okay. Now, which statement describes the difference between the cells in layer Y in conditions P and Q? More negative water potential in P than Q. Yeah, P has lost water, so it will be more negative water potential in P, definitely. All right, so option number one is correct. More cells are plasmalized in P. Option number two is also correct. Cells in uh, cells less turgid in Q. Three is wrong. All right. So, um, you know, if option number three, water potential becomes zero in Q. This is also wrong. One and two is correct. So option B is correct. Question number 26, option B is the correct answer. Different substances such as sucrose and amino acids can move in different directions in the phloem sieve tube element. Which statement explains this? 
active transport occurs in some flow M sieve tube element and mass flow occurs in other flow M sieve tube element. Well, this is a wrong statement. So generally we'll just cancel it out. Both active transport and mass flow occur in each individual flow M sieve tube element. This is also a wrong statement. All right, mass flow occurs in both direction at the same time in each individual flow M sieve tube element. No, this is a wrong, wrong statement. All right, it usually occurs in one direction. Then mass flow occurs in different directions in different flow M sieve tube elements at the same time. All right, yes, this can definitely occur. All right, in different flow M sieve tube elements, uh, you know, um, different flow M sieve tube element, but definitely uh, translocation can occur in different directions. So for question number 27, option D is the correct answer. Question number 28. The statement lists some of the events in cardiac cycle. The statements are not in correct order. Which statement describes the fourth of these events to occur in the cardiac cycle? The impulses travel through perkine tissue. A wave of excitation sweep across atria. Atrioventricular node delays the impulse for a fraction of a second. Sinoatrial node contracts. The wave of excitation sweeps upwards from the base of the ventricles. The ventricles contract. The atria contract. All right, so first the sinoatrial node contracts. Once the sinoatrial node contracts, a wave of excitation should sweep across the atria. All right, the atria will then contract. After the atria contract, the atrioventricular node will delay the impulse for a fraction of a second. All right, so this should be the fourth event. So three is the correct answer, 28B. Which row correctly identifies components of both lymph and tissue fluid? All right, so both lymph and tissue fluid will contain antibodies, that's for sure. Uh, they will not contain red blood cell. Sodium ions, yes. White blood cell, yes. So option B is the correct answer. For 29, option B. Which row, <clears throat> which row is correct for the mean blood pressure in different parts of human circulatory system? Right atrium, right artery in the arm, vein in arm, all right, capillary in arm. Of course, the highest pressure should be present in artery in the arm. That's for sure. Vein in arm can have a lower pressure, all right, that opposes that of the, you know, artery in the arm. So uh, vein in arm, capillary should have a moderate pressure, all right. Uh, definitely right atrium has a very low pressure, actually. All right, vein in arm should definitely have a little bit higher pressure. So uh, option number for 30, option number A is correct. Question number 31, which mechanism accounts for the way most of the carbon dioxide is transported in blood? Most amount of carbon dioxide transported in blood. Okay, carbon dioxide dissolves in plasma and is carried in solution. No, not most amount is not carried in that way. Carbon dioxide is converted to carbaminohemoglobin inside red blood cell. About 10% of the red, you know, carbon dioxide is transported in that way. Carbon dioxide is converted into carboxyhemoglobin. No, carbon dioxide cannot be converted to carboxyhemoglobin. So finally, the carbon dioxide is converted to hydrogen carbonate ion inside red blood cell. Option D sounds like the correct answer. 31, option D is the correct answer. The graph shows the dissociation curves for hemoglobin at two different partial pressures of carbon dioxide. At which position on the graph A, B, C, D is the concentration of hemoglobinic acid lowest in red blood cell? You see, when the blood goes to the lungs, the blood does not need to have this particular hemoglobinic acid at that particular point of time. It needs to lose the H plus ion so that the H plus ion can react with the hydrogen carbonate ion and then produce hydrogen uh, and then produce water and carbon dioxide. So option C should be the correct answer. 32, option C. The table shows the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and oxygen in two blood vessels. All right, partial pressure of gas in pulmonary artery. Carbon dioxide, six. Partial pressure of gas in pulmonary vein. Five, oxygen, partial pressure gas uh, pressure of gas in pulmonary artery. Five, uh, partial pressure of gas in pulmonary vein. Fifteen, 
What explains the difference in the partial pressure of oxygen in the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein? Okay, so for the oxygen part, obviously we can see in the pulmonary artery, the blood was deoxygenated. It was deoxygenated. And after in the pulmonary vein, it was oxygenated. So definitely the oxygenated. Definitely the oxygen's partial pressure will increase. Oxygen diffused from the alveoli into the blood in the capillaries. Could be correct answer. Let's see the other options. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli from the blood in the capillaries. Well, that doesn't explain for oxygen. Oxygen diffused from the body cells into the blood in the capillaries. All right. Oxygen does not diffuse from the body cells. So carbon dioxide diffuses into the body cells. This is also wrong. Option A should be the correct answer. 33A. Which graph shows the effect of carbon monoxide on the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen? All right. Percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen. All right. So without carbon monoxide and with carbon monoxide, we know with carbon monoxide, the uh, hemoglobin will lose its ability to carry oxygen. So this graph that shows uh, with carbon monoxide, the ability to lose, you know, the uh, hemoglobin losing the ability to carry oxygen should be the correct answer. In all other ones, with carbon monoxide, there is a higher saturation with oxygen, which is in B and D, and in low, low in C, which goes to 100%, which is not possible. So for question number 34, option A should be the correct answer. All right. Question number 35, which row shows the correct methods of transmission of the name pathogens? All right, airborne droplets, morbili virus, <clears throat> insect vector, mycobacterium. Well, you know, it is not carried by insect vector. Airborne droplets, mycobacterium, correct. Insect vector, plasmodium, correct. And water, vibrio, cholera. So option B should be the correct answer. Question number 35, option B. Which disease is caused by an eukaryote? A eukaryote is an organism that has nucleus. Cholera is caused by bacteria, measles is by virus, smallpox by virus. So malaria, which is caused by protoctist, and thereby it's an eukaryote. Question number 37, what is the initial mechanism by which bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics? Well, there should be a gene mutation first. So 37A. What are the functions of T lymphocyte? Productions of cytokines. T lymphocyte produces cytokines. All right, they do. T lymphocyte produces toxins. Yes, there are T killer cells that produce toxins, correct. Recognition of an antigen bound to an antigen presenting cell. They also recognize antigen that are bound to an antigen presenting cell. So 38A should be the correct answer. Question number 39, what is correct about the role of memory cells in the long-term immunity? All right, so memory cells, they divide to form plasma cells and memory cells when uh, the pathogen enters the body a second time. Yes, they do divide. All right. They produce a fast response so that the person infected with the pathogen does not become ill. Also correct, you know, they produce a very fast response they produce more antibodies than were produced during the primary immune response. Well, memory cells don't produce antibodies. So if option number three is wrong, so A and C is already gone. And we have already wanted to correct. So option number four should be correct. They remain in the blood and lymphatic system after the pathogen has been destroyed, correct. So B, 39, option B. Question number 40, which events results in a person developing actively acquired immunity? Becoming infected by TV? Yes. Drinking breast milk? No. All right, drinking breast milk, breast milk is passive immunity. Receiving an injection of antigen? Yes, it gives active immunity. All right, receiving an injection of antibodies? No, it doesn't. So one and three correct, option C is correct, 40 C. Guys, thank you for being with us up until the end of the video. Hope you like this particular video. And if you like videos like this to be posted in the channel, please comment and subscribe the channel so that you get notification when the next videos are uploaded. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.